Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have dy over dx equals y plus x over y. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have the y there and it was just x over y? Then this would be a separable differential equation. But is it separable as is? No. It's not a separable equation so we're going to solve it a little differently dy over dx is the derivative of y with respect to x because y is a function of x. So when we find our answer, you're going to see that it's actually a function of x. All right. So let's go ahead and do the following. We have dy over dx, which can be written as y prime, right? But first, notice that y cannot be zero. So at the end, when we get the y values, we have to make sure that y does not equal zero. Make sense? Okay. Under those conditions, multiply both sides by y, and you're going to get y times dy over dx, which I can write as y prime equals y squared plus x. How simple that looks, right? Yes, it kind of does, but that doesn't mean we're going to be able to solve it right away. We have to do a little bit of tweaking here. And that comes from chain rule. Now, if you're familiar with the chain rule, whenever we have a function like e to the power u, u being a function of x, and when you differentiate something like this, you know, the derivative of e to the x with respect to x is just e to the x, the same thing, which, is, which makes it a very special function, by the way, right? But when with e, e to the power u, we don't know what u is. u could be x squared plus 5x plus 3, or it could be tangent x, whatever. But it's going to be e to the u multiplied by u prime. So we have this extra factor u prime which is called the derivative of the inside inside is in this case the exponent makes sense okay so that's that's an important concept i want you to be able to recognize when you see these things that's why i kept mentioning the chain rule now here is what this looks like i have y and multiply by y prime where does the y prime come from think about this as we were talking about it u prime came from the exponent and this time, we don't have an exponent. We have y, a power function, or just polynomial. So it could be that y could be the derivative of something. But y is a function of x. But y is the derivative of what? Think about it. If you don't remember, just think about 2y. What is the integral of 2y, right? Isn't that y squared? Yes, exactly. So in other words, if you differentiate y squared you get 2y, but not only 2y, you also get y prime, y, this time it's the wh-y, because of the chain rules. You have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is y in this case. Make sense? So, I'm so close, right? I just have to multiply everything by 2, then I'll be good to go. Let's do it. Multiply by 2 and multiply by 2. We can do it, right? I mean, it's, it's okay. Now, here's what this becomes. From here, if you think about it, this is the derivative of y squared. And on the right-hand side, I just have 2y squared plus 2x. Awesome. What can I do with this? Okay, take a look. We don't have y, we have y squared. And the derivative of y squared, what does that tell you? Put those on the same side. The derivative of y squared minus 2y squared equals 2x. Awesome. It's not a separable equation, but we were able to kind of put those on different sides at least. And notice that we can use substitution because substitution is, why not, right? It's awesome. y squared, let's go ahead and replace y squared with u. And u hopefully will solve this problem, right? This gives us u prime minus 2u. Again, if it's your birthday, happy birthday to u. Okay. Now, u prime minus 2u equals 2x. So now, this is a linear differential equation. Isn't that awesome? Substitution is just amazing. Now, how do we solve it? First of all, think about the homogeneous case, which means forget about 2x and just set the right-hand side equal to 0. Because this equation is fairly easy to solve. Think about it. The derivative and then 2 times the function, their difference is 0. Awesome. We're going to use the differential operator here, which is the big D. And D, big D acts upon u minus 2. 
And when it does, it means differentiate this, and it just means to the constant, so it just multiplies by that. Make sense? Now, we have a, what is called a characteristic, characteristic equation for this. Replace the u with r, you get r minus 2 equals 0. From here, you get r equals 2. And the root just becomes what? The power of e to the power something x. So we can basically write the solution from here. Since 2 is a root, in general, it's c times e to the power rx. The solutions are going to be like this. But since r is 2, I'm going to write it as c times e to the power 2x. Does that make sense? But notice that this is u sub h. What is that supposed to mean? This is the homogeneous solution. I haven't solved the non-homogeneous case yet, but we're going to do it now. So this is the homogeneous, I hope I spelled it right because I usually get it wrong. This is the homogeneous, not homogeneous, homogeneous solution. Okay, here's what we're going to do. To find the general solution, obviously, we're going to write it a little differently. So I'm going to go ahead and add something to this to get the general u. The homogeneous plus a particular solution. What is the particular solution going to look like? I just need something that works. Since my homogeneous equation has 0 and my non-homogeneous case has 2x on the right, I'm looking for something linear. So I'm just going to add something generic, mx plus n. And we do need this. We do need this piece to get 2x on the right hand side. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Things aren't always this easy, but with the linear case, it should be pretty straightforward. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to differentiate this. The derivative of c e to the 2x is just 2c, or not 2c, hopefully you see what I see. The derivative of 2x is 2, so I have to bring it to the front, plus the derivative of mx is m. Since m is a constant, by the way, m and n are real constants, the derivative of n is 0. Make sense? Now, I got u and u prime. What am I going to do with those? Plug those into the non homogeneous equation. Right here, there you go. u prime minus 2u is going to be 2x. Okay? This was my non-homogeneous equation. Plug it in. u prime is 2c e times 2c times e to the power 2x plus m, that's the u prime, minus 2 times u. u is c e to the 2x plus mx plus n. But when I subtract, I have to negate everything. Let's do it. Notice that something is going to go away. That's what is supposed to happen, obviously, right? Notice that these two terms are going to cancel out, leaving us with no e to the 2x, because we're not supposed to have e to the power of something. That comes from the homogeneous solution. Make sense? And here, we can kind of write this as negative 2mx plus m minus 2n. And these are kind of polynomials that are equivalent. So the coefficient of x's have to be the same on both sides. This means m is equal to negative 1. And this is equal to 0 because there is no constant on the right-hand side, which means m is equal to 2n, which means n is equal to negative 1 half. So m is negative 1 n is equal to negative one half. Wait a minute, what is that supposed to mean, right? Well, it kind of means that, and if we didn't, hopefully, we didn't make any mistakes. Let me go ahead and check my work real quick. This is the 2u, and I subtract it, negative 2c, negative 2m, negative 2n. Yes, everything seems fine to me. Negative 2mx plus m, minus 2, n is equal to 0, and m is negative 1, and n is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, great. So now, what do we do with this, right? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug it into the non-homogeneous solution, which is actually this one. So u is going to be c times e to the power 2x plus mx plus n. Remember that? Plus mx is going to be negative x plus n, which is going to be negative 1 half. So this is the value of u, but remember, u was y squared, right? We replaced it with that, so back substitute. So from here, you're going to get two solutions, plus minus the square root of this expression. One thing we should be careful about, though, is y is not going to be 0. What makes y equal to 0? 
that's going to be an interesting question. If you set this equal to zero from here, let's see if you are going to be able to find a solution. So it's kind of like the exponential and uh, x plus one half. And I don't think they're going to intersect, by the way, because the slope of this line is one. Uh, oh, it's not going to go through the origin, but you know, it's going to have a y-intercept at one, this one right here at C actually. So it really depends on the value of C. But anyways, that's too many details. You don't have to worry about it. Let's just pretend that this is not going to be zero. But if you look at the some of the solutions that I got, let's go ahead and check out something from here. And yes, it was written slightly differently because basically if you put these under the same radical, you're going to divide 2x by 2 and get negative x and then minus 1 half. So it looks like my solution was correct. And this brings us to the end of this video. I don't know why the alarm went off. But anyways, this really brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.